Hi everyone. In this part, we're going to talk about processes and threads. More specifically, we're going to look into the structures that give information on processes and threads, both in New Zealand and Canada land. Then we're going to see how we access thread information as well as process information using a special register, which is GS. Okay, let's get started. So first, we're going to look into the processes, both in New Zealand with the PEB and in Canada land the e-process. So in kernel memory, the e-process structure is used to store a ton of information. It contains the k-process structure at index zero. It has a linked list of all the other processes on the system. It has a lock that can be used for actually modifying fields in the e-process structure itself. So different threads don't do it at the same time. So the main ones that you typically run into are the PCB field, which is the k-process itself, which has interesting data. Then you have the linked list of the other processes on the system because a lot of the time what will happen is you'll find the address of the e-process structure in memory with some kind of kernel leak or something. But let's say that you want to find a privileged process. So the idea is you can work the actual active process links to find other e-process structures. And so the process ID, the PID, is useful because the main thread of execution for the kernel are actually in the system process and it has the PID4, which is static across all Windows versions. So in general, you don't know the PID for the other processes on the system, but you always know the PID4 for the system process. So if you want to find other system tokens, you can just draw the e-process list and look for the e-process that has a unique process ID equal to four, and then you get a token pointer that is associated with the system process. And so the token represents the actual privileges associated with that process. So in New Zealand, a process will typically have its own complicated structure that is not always super well documented by Microsoft. And it's called PEB for Process Environment Block. And so you can use it to introspect a lot of information about the New Zealand process, but it's not as complete as the kernel side. Typically, it holds information such as the list of loaded modules, like user certitude.dll, ntdll.dll, etc. And it will, it will contain the thread local storage, also known as TLS, which is thread specific data. And it will also hold where the different heaps start. So you can find the head of the linked list of processes in the kernel with the PS active process head symbol. And then you can dump the list of processes with using the DL command, which stands for display linked list. And then you could display all the different e-process structures one by one using the DT command or directly using the bang process command to display information about them. So we use the PS idle process symbol to get the e-process address associated with the idle process, which is the process which does nothing. And then we display that e-process structure using, using the DT command. We see that the idle process doesn't have an actual PID, which is interesting because all the other processes on the system do have one. So here we do the same for the actual system process. And as I mentioned earlier, we can see it has the PID4 hard-coded. So now let, let's look into the threads. As you can see, there are similar structures. So instead of the e-process, we have the e-thread. And instead of the PEB, we have the TEB. So in the e-thread structure, in the kernel, the start address can sometimes be useful because you can see where in New Zealand or in the kernel, a given thread started executing, which can help sometimes with reversing. And then depending on what privileges a thread is running with, there will be token imp impersonation associated with the thread itself that could be different from the process token information because different threads can be running win with different privileges. And finally, inside the key thread TCP member, you'll find a, a pointer to the process owning that thread, which is useful to then look at other processes on the system, for instance. So in New Zealand, the TEB, also known as Thread Environment Block, holds information for the thread that are accessible in New Zealand. Typically, it holds information such as the stack boundaries, since each thread has its own stack, and it contains a pointer to the PEB or the process that owns that particular thread. So in 64-bit on Windows, the GS segment selector in New Zealand points to the tab, and in kernel mode, the GS register will point to the specific kernel structure that tracks the process itself, and that holds a bunch of important information about the process state, register state, etc. And that structure is called KPCR, or Kernel Processor Control Region. 
The main point is that when you are reversing the Windows kernel, you often see something like move register and then reference GS and offset. This basically represents an access to some given offset from the GS se segment selector. And that instruction indicates to save that value into a temporary register. At first, this can be quite confusing, but if you know GS points to the actual KPCR structure, then you can see what offsets it accesses and you can match them to the actual KPCR structure as documented by Virgilus, for instance, to know what other types it is retrieving. So for instance, because we can't really retrieve where GS points to, there is an actual field named self. And this self field holds the address of where the KPCR is stored, which is effectively the address referenced by the GS segment selector. And this is useful when some other codes in the kernel expect to work on a pointer to a KPCR structure. Another very important field is the PRCB, which type is KPCRB, which stands for Kernel Processor Control Block. And so it basically represents some block information instead of the region information. But basically, it is an inline structure. So you will end up with accesses inside that structure. So for instance, for that Windows version where the PRCB is at offset 180, you'll end up with an access at different offsets with value above 180 to access different fields inside the PRCB. So for instance, we see that the key PRCB has a pointer to the current thread at offset 8. And we just saw that the KPRCB was at offset at 180 from the beginning of the KPCR. So if we do a little bit of math, we have 180 plus 8 is 188. So basically to directly access the current thread, we would basically have an access at offset 188 from the GS register. So here we know it's actually retrieving the K thread pointer and then saving that into an offset on the stack. But originally, if you see some code like this or this, it can be a little bit confusing at first. But once you recall that the GS selector points to the KPCR, everything is easy and you can find out what the code is doing. In practice, Ida Pro X-Ray's decompiler is quite nice because it will actually show you a function call like ke get current thread, which is like a macro in the Windows kernel, instead of the GS access, and it will do that automatically. As far as I know, Ghidra is not as clever and it won't allow to do that automatically yet. This is why it's important to know what GS is pointing to. So this is just a little diagram to show the relationships between structures. And remember, this is basically what we want to think about when we actually think about the kernel, the kernel is just a series of structures with different relationships. So typically you would have a key thread for your given thread and somewhere inside that structure, there is an embedded K process pointer. And so we said K process and E process pointers are basically the same since, since the K process is the first member of the E process structure. And so then the E process holds a linked list of pointer to the E process structures for all the other processes running on the system. 